Alright everybody, welcome back to Your Dry Delight. When we left off, we had just been seduced by the lovely Leslie, who was drunk and is probably like super, feeling super awkward about everything. I know we are. So let's just go ahead and jump right back in and see where this takes us. I was really excited. I was like, yay! You're really something, boss, that's for sure. And I like you just the way you are. Hypocrisy, narcolepsy, and all. I wouldn't have it any other way. He's like, ugh, oh, early mornings. <laughs> or either that or he's been gagged. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, either that or he's been gagged. He's going to wake up and Meyer's going to be fucking standing over him like, what's going on? It's like, nothing. I stumble into the office bright and early, letting out a long yawn. I haven't pulled an all-nighter like that since my college days, and now I understand why. Because they suck. Slumping into my chair, I glug down my coffee and try to slap myself awake. We've got work to do today, so hopefully Leslie isn't too late. I dropped him off around 4am at his apartment, but he managed to get more sleep than I did, because he passed out at the party after being drunk. You know, maybe I should just go bring the whole coffee pot in here. I've got a feeling I'm going to need it. I rise unsteadily back to my feet, wandering back to the door in a haze. Just as I reach for the handle... Good morning! Ah! Oh, ow! Do you really have to scream in my ears first thing, Richter? I'm happy to see you too, but really. Leslie pinches his ear with a grimace, frowning playfully at me. Rector's like, bitch. Oh, you look terrible. Sit down. I brought some donuts. They'll fix you up right quick. Mm. I let Leslie steer me back to my chair, and he stuffs a donut into my mouth. It's good, but I trade all the donuts in the world for a few hours of sleep. We sit in unusual silence for a little while, munching on our breakfast and sipping coffee. Normally we'd be chattering about various things right now, but I can't bring myself to look Leslie in the eye. Not after last night. I've never felt so awkward in my life. Are we just going to pretend it didn't happen, or... Richter, what's the matter? Leslie calls out to me with a mouthful of donut, gazing at me curiously as he chews. He definitely doesn't seem phased, that's for sure. It looked like a kid who just got caught peeping under a girl's skirt. Richter's like, you son of a... Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, really, what's eating you? I don't like the silence. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Nothing. It's nothing, boss. Listen, why don't we get started on work? We need to go over the new findings. Uh-huh. He still seems pretty suspicious, but eventually he nods. I can't tell if he's playing dumb or he really can't remember. You know, it's probably the latter. By the way, I just couldn't help myself but come back and play this after all that stuff that happened with Leslie. It was just too fucking adorable. He's like the most adorable character in the universe. About Eastman. I think we need more information on everything, including him, before we go to the FBI. If we blow our cover too early, we'll risk losing out on more leads, more potential sources. We should play this smart. Agreed. There's still a lot we don't know. Leslie gazes up thoughtfully at the ceiling, twirling a pin between his sugar-dusted fingers. Is that speakeasy his base of operations? How many warehouses does he have? Are there other key players in his business? I'd say we need to send out some agents to figure out the key details. I don't want to rush into anything. Send out agents? That reminds me, what happened to Earl? The guy I sent to scope out the speakeasy yesterday. I didn't see him come into work today, and he didn't call me like he was supposed to. Boss, I need to make a call. I sent Earl out last night, but he hasn't come in yet. Oh, alright, don't let me stop you. I reach for the phone and quickly dial Earl's home number. Ring. 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 No answer. I have a bad feeling about this. I bet anything that his disappearance is related to that speakeasy, Eastman, and the Mafia. Not good, huh? Leslie seems to figure it out pretty quickly, because he raises a worried eyebrow at me. I grimly nod. Damn it, I should have just gone there myself last night. If something's happened to Earl, then... We'll get some officers and head over there this evening. Boss? Just a quiet investigation at first. See if we can find out anything about Earl. If there's incriminating evidence, then we'll turn it into a full-blown raid. But hopefully, he's just at some cat house this morning, hungover. A cat house is a, is a brothel, like a whorehouse. A cat house is slang for a brothel used commonly in the early 20th century. The term cat has been used to describe prostitutes, which is possibly where cat house as a euphemism for brothel comes from. Leslie gives me a small, reassuring smile. 
It makes me feel a little better, even though a nervous pit still shifts in my stomach. Tonight it is, then. Attaboy. Ready to go over some more reports? Ready as I'll ever be. The awkwardness between them. The rest of the day sinks into a blur of paperwork and coffee. Paperwork and coffee. Leslie and I busy ourselves with our mountain of reports, so there's not much time for the awkward atmosphere to come back. Considering how he's acting, maybe nothing really ever happened at all. Maybe I just dozed off in the hotel room and had a bittersweet dream. Hello? Richter, hello? Two hands roughly shake my shoulders. When my eyes struggle open a few seconds later, I notice how dark the sky outside is. Huh? Wait, was I? There's only one of us who can sleep for half the day, Richter. Don't try to steal my thunder. I fucking love him. Why didn't you wake me up sooner? You were clearly exhausted. Those dark circles under your eyes make you look like a raccoon. It's cute. But listen, try to get more sleep at night, okay? I can't rely on a hazy partner to have my back, after all. And whose fault is that that I didn't get any sleep exactly? Mr. Bright-Eyed and Bushy-Tailed over here. He's like, bitch. <laughs> after we get our things together, Leslie and I prepare to head out to the speakeasy. It's already late, and there's been no call from Earl, so something's obviously going on. Richter, wait. Hmm? As I reach for the door, Leslie suddenly grabs my sleeve, tugging me back a little. About last night. I do remember it all, just so you know. Richter's like, what? <laughs> Son of a bitch. This bastard. So all of today was just an act? I know, I know. I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Please don't hate me too much. But I just wanted to tell you that, well, I'm sorry. He bites his lip, averting his gaze guiltily. It's the same look he had last night right after he kissed me. If you want, we can agree to pretend it never happened. Things can go back to normal. We'll just be regular friends, senior partner and junior partner. Neither of us will speak of it again, and we can chalk it up to me being drunk and stupid. Mostly stupid. Leslie loudly clears his throat, fiddling with his tie. Despite his self-effacing joke, I can tell he's being serious about this. Our friendship's important to both of us, so it's understandable, but... How do I really feel about things? It's not a question of liking Leslie, but last night's situation was, well, I definitely don't want to forget about it <laughs> immediately. I'm like, you were drunk, I, no, no, no boss. I don't want to pretend it didn't happen, definitely not. Oh, Leslie's face, he's like, what? Ah. <laughs> Even though I don't know where things will go from here, I, I know for sure that I like you. You like kissing me is what you mean. I thought that was a given. Well, you were really enjoying it. I felt that little, or should I say, big surprise between your Right, yeah, good talk. <laughs> Richter's like, no, 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 I'm leaving, bye. I left the coffee pot on. Like, the coffee pot's on your desk. Yeah, and I left it on. <laughs> Wesley snickers at my hasty response, back to his normal smug self. But I can tell he's relieved to clear the air between us. I am too. Hey, once we're sure Earl's safe, let's talk about this again, in a more private setting. Does that sound okay? It sounds great, boss. Did you just... Before I can finish, Leslie suddenly pulls me into an adoring hug, squeezing so hard I can barely breathe. He buries his face against my shoulder, nuzzling against it. How can he make my heart ache so much? I'll never become a hard-boiled detective if I keep getting feelings like this. Sighing affectionately, I curl my arms around him and squeeze back, enjoying the few moments of warmth we share. Hmm, okay. Leslie soon pulls back, taking a deep breath. Then we nod at each other just like always. If we hurry, we can get to the bottom of this and still have time to get cannoli before the shops close. Richter, you never told me you could read minds. I try to stay out of yours. Too scared of what I might see. <laughs> clever boy. We head out side by side, determined but hopeful, the partners we've always been. I have faith in Leslie just like he has faith in me. We'll get the job done together. Welcome, gentlemen. Please enjoy your night. Loud music rushes over me in a wave. The familiar sea of dancers, lights, and sparkling glasses. Whoa, this place is quite a scene, isn't it? 
Leslie murmurs at my side as we walk along, glancing around the speak. It's a little less crowded today. They must have known you were coming. Ah, low blow. He's like, oh, oh, the pain of rejection. <laughs> as we weave our way to the bar, my attention's drawn to a group of familiar figures. Those sketchy guys from the other night, but it looks like there's more of them today. I nudge Leslie's side and jerk my chin in their direction. He follows my subtle gesture, eyes narrowing faintly. We exchange no words, but I can tell we're thinking the same thing. Those are Myers men. At the bar, Leslie orders us a couple of drinks, just to keep up appearances. We've got to find some way to ask about Earl, but we can't risk being too obvious about it. Jack! You finally decided to show up, huh? Rector's like, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> when a certain voice calls out over the music, I freeze. If that's who I think it is, then... I was terribly disappointed last night, Jack. The expensive bottle of honey Slivovich I got for you was my sole conversation partner. Slivovich is a plum brandy produced in Eastern Europe. It was distilled in large amounts by Jewish communities in Poland before World War II. While often very strong and bitter in its normal form, it is sometimes combined with honey to make it sweeter and less pungent. Sweet. Sounds good, actually. Sure enough, Meyer saunters up with his usual sly grin, leaning one arm against the bar. Oh, I see you brought a friend. Meyer turns his attention to Leslie, studying him for a few moments before offering a polite nod. Leslie's like, bitch, you be staying away from my man. <laughs> Leslie does the same, sizing the other man up silently, but quickly breaks into a smile of his own. You must be Meyer. Jack was just singing your praises, and you know, I can really see why. Richard's like, stop. <laughs> Hmm, singing my praises, was he? My gaze meets Myers and he suggestively winks. Great, Leslie. Thanks for encouraging him. And who might I have the pleasure of meeting tonight? Leslie's the name. How do you do? Wait, he's giving Meyer his real name? Is he planning something? They reach around me to shake hands, each still wearing a confident smirk. How do you do? Would I be correct in assuming you're a public servant like Jack here, Mr. Leslie? You would be very correct. We met through work, actually. I see, I see. Very interesting. There's something uncomfortable about this atmosphere. What exactly is going on? And you, Meyer, what do you do for work? Curious you should mention that. I consider myself a public servant as well. Oh my, what a coincidence. I had a feeling, really. The second I saw you, I thought to myself, here's a charitable, charitable man, all right. I knew it. You may not believe this, but I had the same reaction. That noble air you have, why, it speaks volumes about you. You strike me as a dutiful sort of fellow, and I respect that. Richter's like, the fuck, dude? No, something is definitely very wrong. There's no way either of them is being serious. In fact, it almost sounds like... Actually, Meyer, I have a question for you. Pausing for a moment, Leslie glances up at the clock. It's only a quick look, but it seems deliberate. Of course, please go on. You didn't happen to see a man around here the other night? Dark shaggy hair, pointy nose, brown eyes, walks with a slight limp. Meyer brushes a hand through his hair, eyes slightly drifting to one side. Hmm, it's very possible. That description sounds quite familiar. But you know, Mr. Leslie, information often comes with a price. At that instant. Ah! It's the cops! <laughs> the speakeasy door flies open and a small group of officers rush in. Screams echo through the parlor after the music cuts off, but the cacophony quickly goes silent. As the officers pull out their guns, the mafia types grab their own pieces, pointing them back at the officers. Piece is a gun. Sling for a firearm of some sort. Yep. Leslie, what? Richter, please. Leslie sharply raises a hand at me, and I fall quiet, stunned. This wasn't the plan we discussed. I thought we were supposed to wait for more information. Unless Leslie did this because he thought I'd be too soft on Meyer. I suggest you cooperate with us, Eastman, and give us the agent's location. Meyer doesn't seem nearly as shocked as he should be. How can he be so calm? He had no idea this was going to happen, did he? All right, I'll cooperate with you. But please, tell your men to lower their weapons. I'll do the same for mine, and then we can discuss things calmly, without threat of accidental bloodshed. Agreed? Leslie hesitates. There's a very strange degree of trust going on here, but I get the sense that neither of them wants it to end in violence. I know Leslie hates hurting anyone, even criminals, and Meyer doesn't seem the type to enjoy it either. 
Understood. Both of them exchange looks and simultaneously nod at their men, who slowly reluctantly lower their guns. The tension in the room eases a little bit, though it's still far from calm. Let me preface by saying your man is safe. He's being held in the back room, properly fed and watered. In fact, he's already gotten to know most of the men. A very likable fellow. That does sound like Earl. The guy can the guy can get along with just about anyone. That's me. I just love people. Up top, Earl. Why did you capture him then? To use him as bait, naturally. Bait? Meyer nods, giving me a slightly apologetic smile, although he looks too pleased with himself about it all. You see, after our friend Jack here showed up the other night, I was struck with an idea. I knew he was a detective before he so much as walked in the door. Your informant's working for me, so I decided to have a chat with him. You mean, back there, that was... Don't get me wrong, Richter. I was enjoying every second of it. But I've been looking for a way to work out an arrangement with the law in Cleveland for some time. You're a hard-headed sort, let me tell you. He exhales a breath between his teeth, gently shaking his head. Richter, however, I could tell he was made of something different. Not so hellbent on enforcing the Volstead Act, yet not just the type to be bought, either. I was intrigued. So I thought I'd try to work out a deal until he cruelly decided to leave me hanging, that is. Giving him my name was what you might call a backup plan. I knew he'd pull it together soon enough and come back when he did. Capturing your agent? Now, that was a little more spontaneous. A little foolish, too, more than likely, but it's how I operate. His lips curl in a devil in a devil may care smirk, and he shrugs nonchalantly. You really had this all planned from the beginning? Wasn't it a huge risk? Of course, but a calculated one. Meyer casually waves one hand as if brushing away my disbelief. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I like to make big gambles, and most of the time they pay off. But I've done my research on your backgrounds, your past jobs. I knew you wouldn't simply raid my venue without showing a little of your hand first. So you could say the chips landed where I thought they might. It's suddenly all too clear how this man became a mafia leader. He's got the right mixture of planning, risk-taking, and charm, all wrapped up in one dangerous package. <sighs> I feel like a man who just got cheated out of his fortunate cards. Leslie rubs his cheek with a hand, blinking rapidly, as if to try and understand everything we just heard. I can't blame him. I knew Meyer was sharp, but I had no idea he'd planned everything out ahead of time. I'll admit, despite the fact that your methods are incredibly questionable, you've made me curious. You mentioned a deal, didn't you? What kind of deal are we talking about here? Leslie. To my surprise, Leslie cautiously questions Meyer, one eyebrow slightly raised. I was expecting him to be furious, but instead he sounds more impressed than anything. Ah, I was hoping you'd ask. Why don't we discuss matters privately on neutral ground? I'll even let you pick the spot, all of us disarmed with a few of our men waiting outside. A moment, if you don't mind. Leslie grabs my sleeve and pulls me aside a little, leaning up to whisper in my ear. You really trust him enough for this? Normally I'd say it's suicide, but this Meyer, he's, he's not like other men I've ever met. It's like talking to the chief of a big cooperation, not a mafia leader. He scratches his head, clearly baffled. It's not like I can blame him. I felt the same way when I first met Meyer the other night. I don't think he means us any harm, boss. He's still a gangster, obviously, but I think he really wants to work out a deal. All of this would be way too much trouble otherwise. And honestly, I'd like to hear what he has to say. Hmm, my thoughts exactly. You think we should hear him out then? After a brief moment of hesitation, I nod. We're playing with fire here and we both know it, but that's nothing new for us. If you don't mind me saying, Mr. Leslie, I gather you're the type to take precautions. Meyer pipes up airily and we both glance over towards him. Shouldn't the two of you not show up in perfect health tomorrow? Or should the two of you not show up in perfect health tomorrow? I'm certain I'll have a big hassle on my hands, and that's not what I want. I assure you. You really did your research, didn't you? It's a favorite hobby of mine. So that means you know what size underwear Richter wears. Boss, I'm afraid you'll have to barter for that information. Oh, you drive a hard bargain, do you? I like that. Richter's like fucking goddamn. I feel like my only ally just switched his colors. Great. Just great. After a little more discussion, the three of us settle on a hotel room for our meeting spot. The unfortunate patrons who had to witness all that, well, they're sent home and promised free drinks when they come back. In this day and age, that's probably enough to risk being shot. Once that mess is sorted out, the three of us head to the hotel with our respective men. I can't even begin to imagine how tonight will end, but I have to hope for the best. To continue the story, pick different choices and play through Meyer's route. Both routes lead to one ending, but you'll need to understand both sides of the story. Unless both sides win, no agreement can be permanent. But 
but no, I'm I'm with Leslie. I want to stay with. He's ador- he's cute. I don't I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> no, I'll go I'll go play through it. Well, that was fun. I liked Leslie's ending. Well, I guess not. I don't know if it's ending, but I liked his side of the story. It was adorable. He's my spirit animal. He's so fucking cute. I love him so much. I just want to squeeze his little face and and boa constrict a hug onto him. He's adorable. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I couldn't help myself. I had to play more. I just, I, I had to. This game is great. It's cute. It's funny. It's got a great story. I like the um, art style. Uh, the people who made this, I think it's Argent Games is what it is. I hope I said that right. Just amazing. I love it. And I love visual novels. You know, they're very, like, anime-ish. And this kind of reminds me of uh, Bacano without the immortality. <laughs> so... And if you haven't watched that, you should watch Bacano and you should watch Gangster because both of those anime are fucking amazing. So if you get a chance to, please go watch them. Uh, Bacano has, like, this thing where, like, the characters are, like, kind of immortal. And then, like, uh, Gangster, like, one of the main characters is deaf, but he's a fucking badass. He's so hardcore. Um, And him and his buddy met when they were, like, kids or something like that. Uh, so yeah, you should totally watch both of those, and I really hope that you enjoyed watching me play through this. I will play through Meyer's Route. I might skip quickly through some of the dialogue options that I've already read, if that's okay. If you want me to reread them, I can. I don't mind. I really love these stories. But yeah, I hope that you guys had fun, and I will definitely see you next time, okay? Love you. Bye!